the Los Angeles Times happened the other day. Um, tragic, tragic, tragic story, especially for people who just work jobs in these sort of entertainment y, creative, fashion y environments, right? Where you're not necessarily the talent, you're not necessarily the star, you're just part of the sort of support structure that helps to keep this industry kind of moving, right? And for the most part, you're doing that job because you love it. You're doing that job because it's a vocation. You're also doing that job because you love the industry or whatever it may be. And it's kind of a job for life, right? You get yourself in these sort of places. From Again, from the little time that I spent being an extra on film sets and whatnot, I know that most of the hair and makeup people are lovely people. Most of the people that do all the assisting and camera sort of stuff are lovely people. You get friendly with them, you're, you're set for life, right? And usually they go a long way in terms of influences sometimes who people get jobs and their reputations and what stories get leaked to the press, like mad different things. But they, they are the bedrock of that industry. And usually if you do a good job, and you just, you know, for the most part, if you're on time, you're pleasant to work with, you've, you've essentially got yourself a job for life. So when you hear these sort of stories, it kind of touches you more because you know of people in your life who have done those kind of jobs. You can identify, you can identify that person as well because you've kind of worked in that position. And it's also just such a terrible, terrible accident, a terrible mistake that's led to such a tragedy that you just can't even wrap your head around it. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of those weird things that happens. You're like, God damn it. So it's question Los Angeles Times, it says a search warrant reveals grim details of rush shooting and uh, inhaler Hutchins final minutes, right? And it says here, yeah, actor Alec Baldwin was practicing removing a revolver from his holster and aiming towards the camera during a rehearsal for the movie Rust. When director Joel Swerza heard what sounded like a whip and then a loud pop, according to a search warrant that provided grim new details about the final minutes of cinematographer Hyla Hutchins life. In a newly released document obtained by Los Angeles Times on Sunday night, Swerza said that the weapon had been described to him as a cold gun, meaning it did not have any live rounds. But the gun discharged, striking Hutchins in the chest and Swerza in the right shoulder, according to Santa Fe County NM Sheriff Detective Affidavit, um, uh, Detective Affidavit used to obtain a search warrant. Hutchins was pronounced dead at the Albuquerque Hospital. So it struck her in the chest, maybe went straight through her heart, maybe her lungs or whatever. It went, she, she basically got hit in the one place in the body that could result in you dying straight away from a single bullet wound. Because, you know, that's usually the place people tell you to aim if you want to, you know, um, if you want to stop somebody, right? Um, center of mass. And that's where she got hit. She got hit in the shoulder, like the director, on the leg, maybe that missing artery, something. She would have probably been alive to this day. So that's the tragic part of it, right? It's such a tragedy. Um, Suaza's so statement to a detective offered a new window into the onset sorry, shooting on Thursday that left Hollywood reeling and calling for safe working conditions on the set. The shooting took place after six members of the film crew walked off the set after the complaining of the production company about the payment and housing. Camera operator Reed Russell told Detective um, Joe Cano, Carol, sorry, Russell's and Swaza statements to the detective offered the most detailed chronology yet of how the tragedy unfolded. So obviously, there was stuff happening before in the day. The day started late because the production had hired a replacement camera crew and were and was working with only one camera, so as a sort of detective. Um, aside from the Baldwin, uh, Swaza said that two people were handling the gun from the scene, Armour, Hannah, Gertz and Reed, and then the assistant director, David Halls, who handed the gun to Baldwin. Because of the COVID-19 protocols, um, uh, Gutierrez Reed set up three pop guns on a car outside Bonanza Creek Ranch Church set. The focus of the search warrant. Halls did not know Live rounds were in the gun that was handed to Baldwin and Halls yelled cold gun according to affidavit. Which again shows a complete incompetence when it comes to the people that were dealing with making sure those guns weren't live. I could understand why somebody doesn't do a last minute check before they hand it to the person um, on the set just to make sure. Similar to what they do, you know, when they take, when kind of space shuttles are going off, like they just go through stuff last minute just to make sure. I know we'll go through the protocols beforehand, but let me just make one last check just in case, because you never know. Because again, you know, we've had flipping space shuttle tra tragedies where one little ring went off on a bolt and it essentially led, led to the whole spaceship kind of blowing up. So if that's the case, doing one last check before something's handed to the star of the show before he kind of points and maybe pulls the trigger might be a good option to go about things. But again, we move. 
Sorter told detectives that the cast and the crew had been preparing the scene before lunch, then took a meal break away from the rehearsal area around 12.30pm. When they returned, Sorter said he wasn't sure whether the gunner was checked again, which it wasn't. He also addressed the possibility of a cast and crew members bringing onto the set live ammunition and live rounds, which can include potentially dangerous blanks. God almighty. Joe said as far as he was knows, no one gets checked for live ammunition on their person or prior after the scenes are being filmed. They only start the only thing checked on the firearms is to avoid live ammunition being in them. Joe stated that there should never be live rounds whatsoever near or around the scene. When they came back from lunch, creeping sh a creeping shadow prompted a camera to be point moved to a different angle, Russell told the detective. As Alec Baldwin was explaining how he was going to draw the gun, where his arm would be positioned, it discharged, Russell said. So again, another unlucky... Again, sometimes in life you wonder if this is our like, if this is like just part of your fate. This is such an unlucky set of circumstances. It just, he just doesn't even bear f fucking thinking of. The people that usually check the guns 27 or you know 27 times before they hand it over to the to the star of the show didn't check it. They go for lunch, they come back, suddenly the sun is starting to set, different shadows are kind of protruding in the set film set. So they move the camera of the angle or the, 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 the camera angle, which might have put the woman directly in line of sight with Alec Baldwin's gun. He then is practicing how to discharge it or unmount it from his gun holster and suddenly hits on the chest. The one place that you don't want to hit if you don't want to be hit by one bullet. It's just like, God, man. God, oh God. Swaza said that he was looking over Hutchins' shoulder when the gun discharged. Hutchins grabbed um, her midsection, stumbled backwards and was assisted ground, uh, Swaza said the detective. Russell recalled hearing a loud bang, seeing, seeing Swaza's bloody and hearing Hutchins say she couldn't feel her legs. Jesus Christ. Um, crew members called uh, in 9 11 asking for help. Script supervisor Mammy Mitchell expressed frustration that an assistant director yelled at her at lunch and asked about revisions according to an audio from a 9-11 obtained in Times. He's supposed to check the guns, Mitchell said on 9-11 call. He's responsible for what happens on the set. Mitchell told the 9-11 operator that she could not say whether the gun was loaded on the real bullet. Hall's the first assistant did not comment at the time's request. Again, that lady's been, oof. Hordes has come under um, under scrutiny before. In 2019, he was um, fired from a film set of Freedom Pass after the crew member had a minor and temporary injury with a prop gun. Um, according to the producer, the film who, from the film, who declined to comment or named because he was not authorised to comment. Because it's an NDAs, I'm assuming, right? That same year, Halls was brought in to replace her assistant director, Courtney Hope F F um, Ferrand, on the film The Pale Door after he was let go. After she was let go from the job, Fiona said the Oklahoma production had made many safety issues and she pushed back on, such as a non safety plan for the tornado in the tornado zone. That's when they brought in Dave because he had a reputation for being lax on safety. Apparently, when the first AD walks off the project, Dave is known to be the guy you call. <sighs> God damn it, man. The Hollywood entertainment industry just like proving once again what pieces of shit they are, innit? Diversity, inclusion, representing marginalized voices, all this nonsense they spout. But God almighty, people are terrible, innit? They are terrible people. Aaron K. Coots. Kuntz, um, whose Paper Street Pictures was a production company on the Pale Door, refuted that Fearnord was fired because she was overzealous about safety and said Halls did not replace her because of the supposed relaxed attitude towards the safety. But Kuntz did acknowledge that the movie unit production uh, manager received safety complaints about Halls during production relating to weather hazards. So he disputes what she said, but doesn't offer a counter, counter narrative. That's usually when you know someone's lying. Dave was frustrated at the amount of time it was taking in between lightning lightning delays, said Coots, who also directed the film. I do remember him growing frustrated. Hey, the lighting is far away. We're good, good, uh, we're good guys. Can we go? We're good guys. Can we go? We need to go. I don't think uh, much of it at the time. Just say Dave's a fiery guy. On the action thriller One Way Shot in Georgia in February, a camera assistant said Halls did not hold a safety meeting before shooting a dangerous scene involving a Russian arm, a crane-like piece of equipment that is attached to a high-speed machine during filming. They reported and reported her concerns to two producers and a local union representation. Those individuals did not comment for a response, of course. The quote says he has this misdemeanor that is almost like he doesn't take anything seriously. Um, it got so bad that I had a meeting with the production team to tell them he didn't care about our safety and it wasn't right. Long was 
surprise when filming began that the highway um, that had been cleared of the outside traffic, especially because it was a raining that day. Meanwhile, she said the walkie talkies were filled with so much chatter that instructions were muddled and that two vehicles being used by the production nearly collided. <laughs> Man, these people are so shit at their job. It's not even fun. Honestly, it's not funny, but it is how terrible these guys are. People at their job. That's when we finally stopped everything. I said y'all can't y'all you, can't talk on the radios anymore. We'll direct this. Usually with this very expensive piece of equipment, we'll come in the day before and talk about what we're looking for. There's rehearsals with a stunt team, extensive safety meetings. We had none of that. Santa Fe County authorities are still trying to determine what kind of um, projectile killed Hutchins. Santa Fe County Chief Officer or Spokesperson Joanne Reese said on Monday, hopefully ballistics and the forensics involved in the ballistics will help to determine that. So they're saying something may have got lost in the gun holster in the kind of chamber where the bullets go which might explain why it kind of hit the woman and again she died with that um people are explaining that maybe shrapnel something happened in there but again that could have been easily avoided if somebody checked the gun but again you know um the department investigation will not be limited to the fatality of the limits um the events of the immediately preceding the area so the continuity the sheriff's office is looking at this case in much more greater scope as opposed to the shooting that occurred on set and the life and the loss of life the investigators along with the sheriff's office are looking at everything that should have been followed from safety standards on on down the search warrant allowed for seizure of all firearms fire components used for the unused ammunition the sheriff's office said that it had taken blood saliva and skin and hair samples but did not disclose Whose samples it was testing a search warrant return shows the detectives recovered nine spent casings three blank revolvers and a fanny pack of ammunition and loose ammo in the tray they also took clothing of those present and blood swords and photos district attorney da, da, da. we are assisting santa fe um rust movie production said the statement that the safety of his crew is his top priority and it was not aware of any petition on sunday the company said it would shut down the film production during the investigation and did not rule out restarting of course they're going to restart <laughs> i just death follows the other incidents da, 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 da. so yeah tragic situation um so far there's been a narrative online of people saying that you know alec baldwin should be charged with murder which is insane he should be charged with something some sort of involuntary manslaughter um, I think somebody has to pay for this. Whoever it is, someone has to pay. Um, I think the fact that he can just walk away from this after essentially, you know, causing the death of somebody or leading to somebody's loss of life is insane. Um, but I also think it's just a tragic mistake for him involved being an actor. Like, you're not the person, it's sort of similar to being a DJ kind of. And sometimes you get asked to promote nights or something. And you, you know, if you want to do it as a favor, you do it. But it's, it shouldn't be a prerequisite of you getting books to play somewhere. Obviously, there's some raves or events that happen that you have to kind of do that sort of thing as part of the deal. But I would imagine as being an actor, you know, you shouldn't be involved in the safety procedures of the staff and the set because you have enough thing to worry about in terms of your own performance and remembering your lines. You should be focused on that. Everyone's got their role. They do their job. So you're hoping that people on the outside are doing that whilst you're in your trailer reversing your lines or, you know, doing lines off the flipping table. You hope that's what's happening. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but you hope that's what is, is actually happening. And then when it comes to you filming, you're ready to go and all, all things are being done, isn't it? All the I's have been dotted, all T's have been crossed. In this case, that didn't happen. So everyone who's involved has to pay in some regards. Will they pay? Probably not. We know how these things go, um, unfortunately. Um, but it is such an unfortunate event. Again, thoughts and feelings go out to Haley, Haley, and is it Haley's her name? Highland Hutchins or Miss Hutchins, regardless. Um, thoughts and feelings go out to her and her family and friends. Um, she's a mum, a wife, a sister, right? A niece. Like it's just yeah, it's just tragic, man. An auntie. It's just tragic. Tragic all around. Can't imagine what that must feel like as a family, knowing again, there's Instagram pictures people are uploading of her saying how happy she was to be on set, riding horses and shit, and just living life in it of a production assistant or whatever, or, or whatever role that she was doing in film, right? It's just a tragic situation all around, man. Really, really tragic. But hearts and feelings go out to everybody associated with her and her family.